in our last lecture we discussed about sequence network and impedance loading in great detail in this lecture we are going to discuss about the sequence network for the synchronous machine or the rotating part of a power system so in case of synchronous machine as we already discussed if we want to develop a sequence network and why we need the sequence network we need the sequence network for solving the unsymmetrical fault so in case of the synchronous machine we will be having some positive sequence network negative sequence network and zero sequence network for this original network and what is this original network if you can see it is actually a y connected network in which we have some y connection with some neutral point and with the neutral point we have some neutral impedance z in we have some neutral impedance z in and if we want to solve this sequence network or for the positive sequence and negative and zero sequence so in case of the positive sequence network what we will be having we will be having some positive sequence impedance plus some source voltage some source voltage and we don't need we doesn't need to uh, to show this source voltage for the positive negative and zero sequence as in case of balance we only need to show this in in positive sequence network and similarly in case of the negative sequence network we have some negative sequence impedance and the terminal voltage is some va with some negative sequence and similarly in case of the zero sequence network for the zero sequence network what we are going to have we have the zero sequence impedance plus plus the neutral impedance 3 into the neutral impedance so what we have the zero sequence impedance plus 3 into zn 3 into zn so if we have some uh, y connected synchronous machine we can solve its network by having some zero sequence network in zero sequence network we have some zero sequence impedance plus 3 into zn similarly some positive sequence network and similarly we have some negative sequence network we have some negative sequence network three phase synchronous generator is designed to produce balanced internal phase voltages ea eb and c with only positive sequence component eg1 so that's why we are in case of balance as it is balanced so we only show the eg1 the e in the eg1 the source voltage in form of eg1 and similarly the vn is actually the product of the zero sequence current and the neutral point impedance the product of the the product of the zero sequence current multiplied by 3 into zn and we place this zn in series with this zero sequence impedance so actually these are the same thing i have added this slide because to make you familiar i familiar with the concept of the sequence network so we already dis discussed this in our previous lecture we are not discussing he it here and in case if we have synchronous generator so the positive sequence current will rotate it with synchronous rotor speed in the direction of the rotor and similarly if we have synchronous we the value for the positive sequence impedance the zg1 will be having some higher value because of the higher magnetic flux penetration and similarly under steady state condition the positive 
sequence generated impedance is called as synchronous impedance so we call this as synchronous impedance there are some two more paragraphs uh, uh, explaining uh, some more details about the synchronous generator and synchronous generator stator so that you have to read in the book that are very simple and if we divide the positive sequence impedance of the machine or the synchronous uh, impedance we will be having some synchronous imp uh, reactance some transient reaction uh, reactance and similarly some sub transient reactance so the synchronous reactance we will study in chapter 6 after finishing our symmetrical faults and similarly unsymmetrical faults then we will be studying about the synchronous uh, synchronous reactance similarly about the transient reactant reactants we are going to study in chapter 13 and about the sub transient reactants we are going to study about in chapter 7 and 9 when we are solving the uh, symmetrical the unsymmetrical faults that time we will be uh, dealing with the sub transient reactants and similarly if, if we like in case of a power system the one option is we have some synchronous motor or synchronous machine the second option is we have some induction motor in case of synchronous motor or in case of induction motor the sequence network for both the motors is the same for both the for both the rotating part is the same the only difference is in the positive sequence network where in case of synchronous motor we have some source but in case of induction motor we don't have any source for the uh, voltage so if we look here the zero sequence network is the same for both the similarly the positive sequence network is same for both with difference here we have some source but here we don't have any source and similarly the negative sequence is also same so in case of induction motor we have the same sequence network as that of the synchronous motor except that the positive sequence have the voltage source em1 that is not available in case of the induction motor so this was uh, some introduction about the uh, synchronous machines the sequence network for the synchronous machine and in this part of lecture we are going to solve two examples related to the sequence component calculation and uh, this example actually this example we have already solved this in chapter 2 in our chapter 2 we already solved this example but here we have to find calculate the sequence component of the line current so we will just use the data to find the sequence component of the line current and we have some assumptions like for example we have the z in actually the uh, impedance between the uh, neutral point is some j 10 and similarly the generator sequence impedance impedances or the zero sequence is j1 the positive sequence is j15 and similarly the negative sequence is j3 so if we look at the, our example 2.5 the data was simple that we have some positive sequence y connected voltage source with eab is 480 volts and similarly this voltage source is applying to some balance load and the balance load is some 30 with some angle 40 ohm and similarly the line impedance between the source and the load there is some impedance and that impedance is 1 and with some angle 85 degree for each base and what we are going to calculate that time we are going to calculate the line current and similarly the load current and the voltages and here we are calculating the sequence component of the line current so this was our example in that case 
we have some uh, we have some y connected source and with the y connected source we have some data connected load we have some data connected load but in this case uh, in our this scenario we have some z in equal to j10 so equal to j10 so here we have some it is some grounded with some reactants and similarly we have some delta connected we converted into some delta connected load and here the value is uh, after conversion is 30 divided by 3 we already told for conversion we divided it by 3 and similarly we have the line impedance the line impedance if the cell L is 1 in 85 degrees so here it is the ZL is 185 here the Z is in 1 with some angle 85 here the ZL is 1 with some angle 85 degree and similarly we have the positive impedance the zero sequence impedance is J1 the positive sequence is J15 and the negative sequence impedance is J3 if uh, we have some note that if we connect the source and the Y load neutral point with 0 ohm then we will be having no effect because that the I in is equal to 0 so if we now want to solve the positive sequence network and the negative sequence network and the zero sequence network so in case of the zero sequence network we have zero current I is equal to zero the line voltage is some 1 8 and with angle 85 degree the I the 0 ZJ0 is 1 and similarly the 3 into ZN is some 30 J30 and here the delta A by 3 is some 10 similarly for the positive sequence network we already discussed in case of positive sequence network we are having some source and some impedance so here we have the source the positive sequence impedance the line impedance and the load impedance and similarly for the negative sequence and if we want to calculate the i1 so i1 is what what is actually i1 i1 is equal to divide the voltage uh, voltage divided by the impedances so we divided the voltage divided by the impedance so we have the i1 current and similarly for the negative sequence component so for the negative sequence again it is short circuit the current is zero and we don't have any source we don't have any source and this is the negative sequence voltage the line voltage and the impedance voltage so we in this example we saw how to derive equation for uh, or derive relation for the positive sequence network the negative sequence network and similarly the zero sequence network so this is the positive sequence network in the positive sequence network the current is equal to the voltage divided by the impedance the sum of the impedance and similarly if we have the negative sequence network we the current is already equal to zero in example 8.6 in example 8.6 actually it is same as example our example um, uh, 2.4 and 2.4 or example 8.5 but no at this time the neutral is solidly ground so the neutral is not ground with some uh, uh, reactants but it is solidly ground with no reactants and we have to find calculate the source current IA, IB and IC. We have to find the IA, IB and IC. So the one method is to solve this by using some KVL. And the second method is to solve the same example with to same the same example with uh, some sequence network method. 
so in this case as we already derived equation for the sequence network we will go for the sequence network method and if, if we are going for the sequence network method we have three voltages between the phase voltages a and g b and g and similarly c and g Similarly, if we and we have to find the positive sequence voltage, the negative sequence voltage, and the zero, the the positive sequence voltage, the zero sequence voltage, the positive sequence voltage, and the negative sequence voltage. What actually we are going to do? We have to multiply the phase voltages matrix with operator a matrix and divided it by 3 so we will be having the zero sequence voltage the zero sequence voltage similarly we will be having the positive sequence voltage 1 by 3 operator a and similarly the phase voltages and similarly we will be having the negative sequence voltages And if we want to derive the equation or uh, the sequence network, so in that case we have the positive sequence voltage and the positive sequence voltage, the zero sequence voltage, the current is equal to zero and the load. Similarly, we have the positive sequence voltage, the positive sequence voltage, the load impedance and the line impedance and the value of the current is again voltage divided by the line impedance plus the load impedance and similarly if we have the negative sequence network in the negative sequence network again we have the i equal i2 equal to in this case as we have some value for the v2 so for the v2 we have some value because why we have value for the v2 because the system is imbalanced so the system is imbalanced that's why in previous example the value of v2 the i2 was zero but in here as the system is imbalanced so we have some value for i2 we can sum this the positive sequence i1 similarly the negative sequence i2 and similarly the zero sequence i3 the i0 we have value for i0 equal to 0 i1 equal to 25 into 82 similarly for the i2 0.85 into 82 so we can find simply by multiplying the matrix we can find the IA, the IB and similarly the IC. This is one method to solve to find IA, IB and IC using the sequence network method. You are using the operator A and some phase voltages. And